today we're going to be looking at lesson two. We're going to be switching on from lesson one. Um, so make sure you go to assignments and then go to the one that's reading the introduction and section one. Going to be jumping into a new lesson, which is going to be talking about the American Indians and their land, um, specifically how the American Indians adapted or changed to different environments in North America. In this lesson, you will find about the first people to live in North America. You will find find out where they came from and the places that they settled in. The descendants of these people are the American Indians. Most American Indians tell stories that explain where their ancestors came from. These stories have been passed down for many years. This lesson includes an example of one of those stories, and we'll actually be reading that story today. Many scientists believe that these first people moved from another region. They came from the continent of Asia to North and South America, traveling into many parts of the American continents over hundreds of years. These early people settled in different locations around the Americas. You will read about the various places in which American Indians lived and see why they had different ways of life. By staying in the same regions for many years, tribes became very skilled at living off the land. The American Indian man in this image made his clothes and gear from things found around him. Um, so they're talking about this man and we're going to see how they use the resources around them to survive. There were different environments on this continent that the first Americans settled in. You will learn about four kinds of environments and why each environment presented different challenges to the American Indians and how tribes found ways to overcome these problems. As an example, you will take a close look at the Inuit tribe in the field, ice fields of the Arctic. Why might this environment be challenging to live in. So just seeing that word ice, you're going to already see the challenges that they might face. Um, you are going to see some notes down here. Do not feel like you need to, uh, to complete those. Those are not necessary for today. We are going to be jumping into the next section, section one. And this is where we're going to actually see one of those stories. Storytelling has always been important to American Indians. In some tribes, members would meet in a kiva, and we can click on that to see what a kiva is. It is a circular area, sometimes underground, where tribe members talk, work, or perform religious ceremonies. So like in this picture, you can see that they had to come down the ladder, so this is underground, and this would be a place where they would meet. They would share stories or reenact them during spiritual ceremonies. They told stories to entertain one another and to teach about their beliefs and ways of life. They used stories to explain and record their experiences for future generations. So they didn't have textbooks like us. They would tell their children and then their children would tell their children and it'd be continuing on for each generation. One kind of story American Indians passed down through the years was the origin story. These kinds of stories explained, and so looking origin story is a story that explains where ancestors or tribe members came from. So these stories explained how Earth and its people came to be. The Hopis are an Indian American Indian group who live in the southwest in what is now the state of Arizona. The following is a Hopi origin story. In the beginning, earth was damp and dark. There were no animals or birds. At first, the people lived happily inside earth. After a while, however, their caves became too crowded. People began to argue with one another. The worried chief agreed that his people needed to leave leave Earth's dark inside. Um, so that word chief is what they call their leader of the group. Um, and right away, I know that this story is not true, that they're talking about living inside the Earth. Um, and a lot of these stories aren't going to be true um, and be a story that they think is true. But we can look back and know that that is not quite how it works. The chief's advisors made a mocking bird that found a hole at the top of the earth and flew around the world. When, a, when the bird came back, he reported that life above them was very different. 
Something that I'm making a connection to is this sounds very much like create the story of creation. That at first there was no animals or birds. And then people lived happily inside the earth. Adam and Eve living happily inside the Garden of Eden. And then people began to argue with one another right before the flood. Um, and then we see this, that the mockingbird found a hole at the top of the earth. We also see that story when um, Noah on the ark, he sent a bird out, um, came back, and the bird reported that there was life. And we see that in the first couple stories in the Bible. We're going to keep reading. The chief's advisors grew sturdy plants that reached like a ladder to a hole in the earth's crust. The chief guided his people up the plants to the earth's surface. Once there, the people did not know where they should settle, so they set out in different directions. They traveled east, west, north, and south until they found good land upon which they could grow crops and build villages. That is how it all began for the Hopis. Um, and that's something, like I said, it doesn't sound the most true to us of people living inside the earth, um, but we can make a lot of connections uh, to the story of creation. And it's very interesting that this is the story that they would tell their kids and that it would continue on for each generation. You do not need to read through this, the introduction and section one, but I would like you to, on your own, Put this story in order and then you are all set for today.